Anthony Chan joins us now from New York. He's the chief economist for Cho Chase Private Client. That's a division of Chase Bank. Um, Anthony, I want to read a passage to you from an opinion piece in a Japanese newspaper from June. It says, recurrent allegations have raised concerns that Abe has become too comfortable in office and has begun to use the instruments of power to benefit his cronies and further his radical views. Explain for us how he was able to survive scandals, stumbles along the way when other leaders would have been voted out of office. Well, I think if you look at uh, the general public uh, in Japan, it was very clear that the public uh, was very excited about the LDP and perhaps uh, less excited about uh, Prime Minister uh, Shinto Abe. Uh, but by and large, because uh, both the LDP and their uh, junior partner got uh, the two-thirds, uh, he's clearly uh, in control. and. It gives him an opportunity to continue with his agenda. And, and talk to us a little bit about that. What does this do for his push to revise Japan's post-war constitution? And how might that impact Japan-China relations, do you think? I think that right now we're still a little bit uh, far uh, away from uh, moving entirely in that direction. Certainly, the, the supermajority that he has uh, uh, won in this election is, is, is helpful. Uh, but remember, you also need to have a public referendum that has to basically generate a majority uh, uh, in favor of, of changing the Constitution. And the surveys, uh, polls uh, do suggest that the public is still not entirely there. In fact, some polls suggest that only 32 percent of Japanese people are, are really uh, supporting uh, a change in the Constitution. So just because... Uh, uh, we got the supermajority, certainly helps them with the agenda, but with regard to the Constitution, I don't think that the uh, Japanese people are entirely there yet. What about the Japan-China relations? Because they've been strained at times under Abe's rule. I think that that is uh, challenging, but given the fact that uh, uh, Abe is likely to be the longest-running uh, prime minister in quite some time, uh, certainly that gathers uh, some respect. And I think the Chinese will try uh, to smooth out relations, and we'll see. Uh, but certainly these, these elections uh, kind of legitimize uh, his administration even more. And that, I think, will make China a little bit more willing uh, to, to try once again uh, uh, to try to get along uh, and, uh, and remember that they, they do have some shared goals. So at the end of the day, I think that both parties will try to, to make it work. And Anthony, uh, one final question. We've got about a minute left. Uh, the Wall Street Journal carrying a rather clever headline. Uh, the stakes and stocks rise for Japan's Abenomics. Uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe faces, though, long-term economic challenges now that the election is over. The markets responded well, of course, to this news, but he still has to tackle deflation, slow growth. Uh, how does he go about doing that? Well, you certainly know that he's been in favor of the value-added tax, but he's going to take some of that money to plow it back uh, or reinvest it into the economy. Uh, and that certainly will act as a stimulant. They haven't uh, generated the, uh, the inflation target that the Bank of Japan wants. So that's been a challenge in a world where the uh, debt to GDP is still at 250 percent. So there's challenges. Uh, certainly haven't won on the, on the deflation uh, the battle, but I think they're making uh, progress there. On an economic front, uh, I think they're making good progress. I mean, their potential growth rate is barely above a half a percent, and they're growing much faster than that. So I'm encouraged. Okay, Anthony, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us from New York. You